welcome back to the Library of Parthos. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to be talking to you about a book that I just finished that I really enjoyed and I'm waiting very impatiently <laughs> for the second book. So the story that I just finished reading is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. This is an adult fantasy novel I believe is how she classifies it. Um, first of all, this is an Illumicrate edition of the book, which I think is just gorgeous. Some beautiful artwork in there of two of the main characters. So this story takes place on the Isle of Cadence, um, which is just its own island. There is a mainland that is referenced. Some of the characters go to the mainland. Cadence has magic. It doesn't seem like the mainland does. Um, so that's one of the kind of the major differences between the two of the the island and the mainland. So Cadence is split up into kind of two parts. There's the east and the west. There's a clan line that separates them. Um, it is an enchanted clan line. So if you cross to one of the sides, um, it does let the people know. So, um, but they're also enemies so that that doesn't really happen a lot the Breckens live in the west and the Tamerlanes live in the east um, and as I mentioned this the, the island does have magic but it works different on both sides so in the east magic takes a toll so there are people who are able to um, basically enhance things that they make with magic like weapons or um, the main character's mom sews plaids with enchantments in them but it does take a toll on their physical health um, however their land is very plentiful they have like rich harvests all of that stuff opposite case in the west where people are easily able to make enchanted items it does not take a toll on their physical health however uh, the ground is not good for planting so come winter time they are hungry um, and so it is pretty common for them to raid houses and farms in the east and that's like a major problem um so jack is the main character um he has been away to the mainland for around 10 years i believe learning to become a bard he's been in university he now has like a job there as a teaching assistant he's hoping to get his own class like has very much settled into life on the mainland he gets a note from the the lord of the east saying hey we need your help you need to come home um, so when he gets home, he finds out it wasn't actually the Lord who sent that letter. It was his daughter, Adira, um, which I had to look up how to say her name. And it's actually kind of cute. Um, she and Jack call each other my old menace throughout the whole story because they, at one point, when they were kids, fought over thistles, I think. Um, and so they call each other my old menace, which I think is just like the sweetest nickname. It's super cute. Anyway, um, some of the young girls have gone missing. The Daira needs Jack to play songs for the spirits on the island to find out what is happening to these girls because they've searched everywhere that they could in the east and there's no trace of them. They can't figure out where they are going. Um, so that's the main plot of the story is them trying to figure this out. Now, to get into some spoilers, so again, if you... Um, are planning on reading it and don't want the ending to be spoiled or you just don't like spoilers period <laughs> then definitely skip this part um so i really got attached to all of the characters in this story i feel like they're all kind of given enough time in the spotlight there's i said jack is the main character um, because the majority of the book does take place around him however i do feel like there are kind of four or five main characters in the story. Jack does has never known who his father is. He actually comes back from the mainland where he, he's been gone from the island for 10 years and he has a little sister now. So, and his mom says it is his full-blooded sister. So at some point she met up with his dad and now there are, now there are two of them. Um, but that kind of caused a lot of issues for him growing up because he didn't really feel like he belonged anywhere so when he went to the mainland he was really looking for that there and thought he had found it now that he's back on the island um he thinks maybe that's where he where he belongs instead um adira is just trying her best to be a good leader um she's very devoted to her clan all of the people love her 
um, and she's just trying to do the best that she can. Um, of course, if there's a romance element in the book, I'm going to be a huge fan of it, and I was. Um, so Jack and Adira end up getting married more out of necessity than anything. That's kind of a theme in the story now that I think about it. Um, she's trying to make peace with the West, and she has a plan to meet the heir of the West. She's the heir of the East, but she needs to go alone unarmed, and they realize um, that because when you get married, you become one. If she has a husband, she can take her husband with her and still, like, follow the rules of the treaty that she set, kind of set up. So, of course, she wants to marry her old menace. So they do a hand fast, which I guess is not, like, binding like a blood vow is. They mention that as well. So their hand fast lasts for a year and a day or longer if they wish it. Um... So, again, starts out as kind of a necessity, but of course they, their true feelings come out um, throughout the, the rest of the story. In a similar vein, um, her cousin Torin is the leader of the guard. He's the one who kind of knows if somebody crosses over the clan line, and his daughter ends up getting taken, um, disappearing as well, which really, like, destroys him. He's distraught by one point in the story. Um, so his, his wife, Sidra, is a healer, um, and she's his second wife. His, his first wife and the mother of his daughter passed away, I think, in a battle, maybe? Um, and again, married out of necessity. He and Sidra, he married Sidra so that he would have somebody to raise his, his daughter while he was working. Um, but throughout, again, throughout the, the story, and I feel like it's stronger with their relationship, you kind of see how their relationship has changed and how it's not just out of necessity, which then turns into friendship, which then turns into, like, love and, um, not really knowing how to convey that to each other and, um, trying to understand each other's needs. Like, it was, it was really sweet to see, um how they grow as a couple. At one point, Torin loses his voice, and, um, he's just, he's kind of like a gruff, like, very abrasive person, like, not unkind, but just, like, all about action, and when he loses his voice, he really takes time to notice things, and he kind of notices all that she does, all that Sidra does for their family, for his father, for the townspeople, um, which he wouldn't have noticed otherwise. So after that, they really have a, a strong bond in their relationship, which was really sweet. So the, like, the the big, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this <laughs> moment of the story. There's two. You find out that Jack's dad is Brecken. So he, his mom is from the East, his dad's from the West. Completely unheard of. Um, and the same for his little sister as well. Um, so now he's, like, real thrown off. I really don't know where I belong now because I was born and raised in the East. I feel like I belong here. I feel like this is where I should be, but also my father's from the West, so there's that part that I want to explore too. You also find out that Adira is the daughter of the Lord of the West. As a baby, she was very sick, so they left her out for the, the spirits to take and switch with a healthy baby, um, but that didn't happen. Jack's father brought her over to the east and she was raised by the lord and lady there who had just had I think a stillborn. Now she feels like she needs to go to the west and kind of explore what her life could have been had she grown up there. Um, so when we got to the end of the book when all of those facts were out in the open and um, in the east they've captured the heir of the west so there's this like trading going on um we need to punish him for he was the one who stole the girls we need to make sure that he pays for doing that even though he returned them um but at the same time the west needs some sort of some sort of trade for that as well so adira says i'm gonna go to the west for however long you guys want to keep you want to keep him however long he needs to be punished i will go and live in the West for that same period of time, either as a prisoner or as the, um, the heir, whatever you guys want. Um, and she wants to take Jack with her, but 
uh, this, is, this killed me. There's no music in the West. Like, they don't allow music in the West because the spirits are so strong over there, the, the music upsets them. So Jack would either have to stop being a bard, which is his livelihood, um, to go with her, or he has to stay. And he decide. I mean, he doesn't really decide to stay. She kind of says, I need you to stay. You need to take care of your family. Feel like there's so much more that these characters are going to experience. Torin and Sidra are in a good place in their relationship, so I'm curious to see how they continue to grow as a family. Jack and Adira are now separated, um, but they know a lot more about their heritage than they did at the beginning. Um, so I'm hoping that by the end of the next book they can all come back together. Overall, I, I really liked the magic in the story. The spirits are kind of split up between the the sea, the earth, fire, and air, so it's very much like avatar style bending. <laughs> um, nobody can harness those powers, but they are there. And it there were some cool things, like if you needed somebody, you could just like whisper their name into the wind and the wind would carry, if the wind was feeling, you know, generous, they would carry your whisper to that person directly. Um, if, some, if you were trying to get somewhere that was very far away, the hills would like remold themselves to make it shorter. So there were some very cool magic elements in this story that I really enjoyed. Um, and I thought that the, the mystery, um, it wasn't extremely obvious at the beginning, like I wasn't able to figure it out very quickly. She did a good job of kind of giving you pieces of information slowly so that you could try to figure it out. And then by the end it was still a little bit of a surprise. Um, but I was able to kind of get a better picture by the end. So overall, really enjoyed it. Looking forward to the second one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.